what Jesus said about lust that many people do not know. Matthew 5, 27-28, Amplified Bible You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You have heard that it was said to those of old. Now, Jesus addresses the teachings they had previously received concerning the law of adultery. Naturally, the instructors of the day taught their students that the act of adultery in and of itself was immoral. However, the legislation was only applied to people's actions and not to their intentions. Adultery was categorically forbidden by the Mosaic law. Exodus 20, 14 You shall not commit adultery. Deuteronomy 5, 18 You shall not commit adultery. One could be pleased with themselves for having never disobeyed this commandment, but at the same time, having eyes full of adultery. They have eyes full of adultery, constantly looking for sin, enticing and luring away unstable souls. Having hearts trained in greed, they are children of a curse. 2. Peter 2, 14, Amplified Bible Even while someone presents a good front, it's possible that his thoughts are continually straying into murky territory. Therefore, Jesus instructed his disciples that it was not enough to merely abstain from the act itself. They also needed to be pure on the inside. The law forbade the act of adultery. Jesus forbids the desire. Whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. E. Stanley Jones caught the importance of this verse when he wrote, If you think or act adultery, you do not satisfy the sex urge. You pour oil on a fire to quench it. Sin begins in the mind, and if we continue to feed that sinful thought, we will eventually act on it. We have come across the proverb that states, Whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus adds that it is possible to commit adultery or murder in our hearts or minds and that this is likewise a form of sin and is prohibited by the commandment against adultery. Jesus traced the roots of sexual desire all the way back to the eyes when he said things like, whoever looks at a woman. This is true according to biblical statement and life experience. Job 31 1 Amplified Bible I have made a covenant, agreement with my eyes. How then could I gaze lustfully at a virgin? When one seemed to pity a one-eyed man, he told him he had lost one of his enemies, a very thief that would have stolen away his heart. Trap some people only refrain from committing adultery because they are embarrassed about the possibility of being discovered. But deep down, they do it on a daily basis. It is to their credit that they refrain from engaging in the sexually explicit act of adultery. Nonetheless, the fact that their minds are preoccupied with such thoughts is extremely problematic. This principle applies to much more than men looking at women. It applies to just about anything we can covet with the eye or mind. These are the most searching words concerning impurity 
that ever were uttered. Morgan. Adultery in his heart. Because Jesus considers adultery in the heart to be a sin, we can deduce that what we think about and what we allow our hearts to rest on is a result of the choices we make. We may not be able to control passing thoughts or feelings, but we certainly do decide where our heart and mind will rest. A popular Bible commentator said, Imagination is a God-given gift, but if it is fed dirt by the eye, it will be dirty. All sin, not the least sexual sin, begins with the imagination. Therefore, what feeds the imagination is of maximum importance in the pursuit of kingdom righteousness. An example of an individual that disciplined his eyes was Job. The book of Job is remarkable in many ways, but one of its most endearing qualities is that it illustrates how a man can be both very human and extremely heavenly at the same time. Job 31, 1 I made a covenant with my eyes, not to look lustfully at a young woman. It is also important to distinguish between temptation to sin and sin itself. The look is supposed to be not casual but persistent, the desire not involuntary or momentary, but cherished with longing. Jesus, despite the fact that he was tempted in every way, withstood these temptations, but did not give in to such sin. Hebrews 4, 15, Amplified Bible For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human, in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. He was able to see women as more than just things for his sexual fulfillment. He was tempted in all points as we are, but desire was expelled by the mighty power of a pure love to which every woman was a daughter, a sister, or a betrothed, a sacred object of tender respect. Bruce How we conduct ourselves in the struggle against sin If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Here, Jesus uses a figure of speech and did not speak literally. Mutilation will not serve the purpose. It may prevent the outward act, but it will not extinguish desire. Bruce According to what we read, it would be better for you if just one of your members were to expire rather than for your whole body to be tossed into hell. Jesus did nothing more than emphasize the idea that in order to be obedient, one must be willing to sacrifice. If we allow sin to control a portion of our lives, we need to be able to reconcile why it would be better for that portion of our lives to die than for our entire lives to be judged guilty. This is the one thing that the majority of people are hesitant to do, and as a result, they either continue to live their lives mired in sin, or they never come to know Jesus.
they never get beyond a vague wish to be better. The salvation of our souls is to be preferred before all things, be they ever so dear and precious to us, and that if men's ordinary discretion teacheth them for the preservation of their bodies to cut off a particular member, which would necessarily endanger the whole body, it much more teacheth them to part with anything which will prejudice the salvation of their souls. Paul. No wonder Paul exhorts believers to flee from sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 Amplified Bible Run away from sexual immorality in any form whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Ephesians 5.3 Amplified Bible But sexual immorality and all moral impurity, indecent offensive behavior or greed must not even be hinted at among you, as is proper among saints. For as believers, our way of life, whether in public or in private, reflects the validity of our faith. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 Amplified Bible For this is the will of God, that you be sanctified, separated, and set apart from sin, that you abstain and back away from sexual immorality. Jesus' most famous message, the Sermon on the Mount, focused on the hearts of his listeners. He targeted his disciples as the audience and proceeded to preach what we now call the Beatitudes. He called his men to be different, to see the world from God's perspective, to relate to people in a supernatural fashion. To maintain one's sexual purity requires more than simply abstaining from engaging in lustful activity. It is also something that involves the heart. Do not commit adultery was another of the Ten Commandments that many Jews probably assumed they could check on a list of sins successfully dodged. But Jesus said that looking at a woman lustfully is to commit adultery with her in your heart. Immoral actions then begin with immoral thoughts, and the immoral thoughts are evil too. You can't address sin by only dealing with external actions. Lust is a vivid illustration of the kind of sin that Jesus urged his followers to avoid, and in today's culture, it presents a significant obstacle to the pursuit of moral purity. Jesus desires for his disciples to have such a profound commitment to moral purity that they are ready to cut off anything in their lives that tempts them to sin. He's not calling for physical mutation. Again, sin is a matter of the heart and not merely the eyes and hands. Instead, he's calling for a radical approach to avoiding sin. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.